Hey everyone and welcome to VR Flight World. So we have another exciting announcement from Microsoft about the new Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. They have announced the new computer specifications that they will require for someone to run the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Microsoft laid it out into three categories. There is a minimum, a recommended, and an ideal specification. My speculation is that the minimum for VR flight will fall into the range of recommended or ideal depending on how you want your sim to run. However, that information has not been released and is just speculation from me at this point. So minimum specifications for Flight Sim 2020 is that uh, you're going to need at least a Windows 10. You're going to have to have VRAM of 2 gigabytes. You're going to have to have at least 8 gigabytes of RAM. And your hard drive is going to have to have 150 gigabytes of space. And one of the kind of unique ones here is you need to have five megabytes per second of bandwidth. And so that's your internet speed. They've also broken down here into AMD and NVIDIA. So with the AMD, you need to have a Ryzen 3 1200 for your CPU. And your GPU would be a Radeon RX 570. On the NVIDIA side, you have to have an Intel i5 4460 for your CPU. And for your GPU, they want a NVIDIA GTX 770. So for any gaming computer out there, this these specifications are going to be very easy to match. So which is amazing for us because you don't need to have the highest end computer to run Microsoft Flight Sim. Now, if you're going to run it well, you're going to have to, to boost your system here. But the specifications are lower than I think most people were expecting to have when we see when we've seen all these trailers coming out. Uh, we've expected higher setting or higher system requirements than what has been put out here. So this is this is good news for everyone. So uh, let's go on to the recommended settings. So with recommended settings, they also want uh, Windows 10, and that's going to be across the board. Uh, you're going to have to have VRAM of four gigabytes, RAM of 16 gigabytes, and hard drive of 150 gigabytes. And your internet speed this time they want 20 megabytes per second for recommended. For the AMD side, for recommended specifications, they want the Ryzen. 5 1500x for the CPU and for the GPU they want a Radeon RX 590 and on the Nvidia side they want an Intel i5 8400 for the the CPU and for the graphics card they want a Nvidia GTX 970. So the next one here is ideal specs. So again it's Windows 10 for operating system and uh, it's going to be the VRAM is going to be 8 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes of RAM. In this one, they specify 150 gigabytes on a solid state drive and bandwidth, they say 50 megabytes per second. So for AMD, with the ideal specs, they want the CPU to be a Ryzen 7 Pro 2700X and they want the GPU to be a Radeon 7. So for NVIDIA, they want an Intel i7 9800X for the CPU and for the GPU, they want a NVIDIA RTX 2080. So one thing you may have noticed that is different from most other games is that the, they specify the recommended internet speed. This plays a large role in the quality of sim as Microsoft Flight Sim is using uh, large servers to feed scenery to your computer uh, during the gameplay. This is because there's too much detailed data for any modern hard drive to support. Now, from what I understand, you can get around this by downloading certain areas before you take your flight. So this will allow you to have it stored on your system but you'll only be able to do this for um, small areas at a time because uh, it's going to take up a lot of space. And that's what Microsoft has mentioned in one of their videos, so I'm hoping that is still true. Otherwise, if you're running a slower internet connection, what's going to happen is they're going to downgrade your scenery and they're going to make it work and it's probably going to be fairly seamless, but it's not going to bring in quite as much data um, if you only are running a 5 megabytes per second versus running the 50 megabytes per second where you'll get all the scenery that your computer can handle. Now probably the best part about this release is that the news on the minimum specification, this is a lot lower than we've expected. Uh, this is really going to open it up for people that don't have the best of the best computers. The minimum specs are fairly reasonable and even the recommended specs can be easily accomplished by most gaming computers on the market. If you're looking to go into VR with this sim, I would recommend staying closer to ideal specs. However, without being able to test this and without any data, it is hard to say what you can expect in VR. Right now, it's just speculation. I would love to know what your thoughts are on the new specs. Let me know in the comments below if you plan to do any upgrades. And uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.